Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit come and enlighten the understanding of each of you so that you may know exactly what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I'd like to start today's meditation answering uh, a comment, actually a request, a cry for help of a person that says, Bishop, I don't know what is wrong with me. I don't know what is wrong with me. I try to do the fast of Daniel, but always end up breaking the fast. And I don't have the Holy Spirit. And also, I've deceived myself three times, Bishop, thinking that I had the Holy Spirit. See that? I deceived myself three times thinking I had the Holy Spirit. By the way, my child, you are not the only one. There are plenty of people out there deceived thinking they have the Holy Spirit. And it's incredible. It's extremely painful, but it's incredibly unbelievable. The number of people who are like Elimas, the magic that wanted the Holy Spirit at all costs. He wanted even to pay for it. However, the Holy Spirit doesn't come through money. We don't conquer the Holy Spirit with money. It's not with money or with anything from this world that we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. He's God. There is nothing greater than God. He is greater than all things. He is great. He is immeasurable. He is infinite. He is something, let's say, that there is no price. It's priceless, of course. In order for the person, and I speak this way in order for you to understand the following, in order for you to have God's greatness, God's infinite, in such a finite and fragile body, you have to give up on all your life, your whole life. It's not money, it's not assets, properties, nothing like that. What makes a person receive the Holy Spirit is when they give themselves a hundred percent. And what I see here is that you say like this, Look at how you express yourself. You said like this, Bishop, I hope that you can help me. I don't know what else to do. I am thinking of giving up. Look at that. Just by the fact that you are considering to give up shows that you never placed all of your life on the altar. It shows that you indeed have not been able, willing to pay the price which is to give your life, a hundred percent to the Lord Jesus. And without that, it's not possible for you to receive the Holy Spirit. It's the Lord Jesus whom gives us the Holy Spirit, who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. If you don't surrender your life to Him, then how is He going to give you His Holy Spirit? Do you think He will give the Holy Spirit to a stranger? Of course not. The Holy Spirit is only for those who truly, truly, desire Him with all of their heart, with all of their strength, 
with all of their soul. If you are not willing to do that, then it's impossible for you to receive the Holy Spirit. It's like Jesus himself said. He said like this, The Father, my Father, does not give the Holy Spirit by measure, which means the Holy Spirit doesn't come by measure, a bit today, a bit tomorrow. Either you receive Him in His plenitude or totality, or you won't receive Him at all. Now, what do I understand when the Lord Jesus said that the Father doesn't give us the Holy Spirit by, me by measure? What I understand is the following. If He doesn't give it by measure, do you think that He will accept you by measure or anybody by measure? So, my friend, you who are watching me now and you want to receive the Holy Spirit, there has to be sacrifice, the sacrifice of your own life. You have to let go. You have to surrender a hundred percent. Just to give you a small idea of how it is. If you live in Brazil, especially, you know what it is to be robbed. If a thief points a, a gun to your head, and says like this, I want everything you have. Straight away, trembling of fear, trembling out of fear, you are going to let go of everything, everything. You will not keep anything on yourself. You will not hide anything because you know that if the thief finds anything, he will kill you. So it's your life that is at stake there. So you do not care about giving everything you have there. And so it is concerning God and the salvation of your soul, the surrender of your life. Either you give everything or you don't. The difficult part or the main problem is that many people give part of themselves Sometimes they even give offerings on the altar, but they don't give their heart. They don't give their heart. This is the reality. And then indeed, it's, it's hard. Jesus condemned the Pharisees and the religious hypocrites, the Jews hypocrites. They would keep the Sabbath, they would give the tithe of the cumin and the mint of the herbs. They would keep the festivals in Jerusalem. They would do what the flesh liked and the flesh accepted and even submitted to these rituals. But when it would involve their character, when it would involve sincerity, they wouldn't do it. So that's why Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Woe to you. So, my friends, we are not here playing of being a church. We are not joking with God of, you know, playing hide and seek with Him. No. We are at war against hell because for as long as the person does not give the, the leftover of their life that they have, if, if they don't give it all on the altar and place above all, in first place, the Lord, the Almighty God, the Savior, Jesus Christ, then they will not receive the Holy Spirit. So you can even do the fast of Daniel. But if your thoughts, pay attention, you, you don't absorb secular news, you don't care about what's happening in the world, you are only thinking of the things of God. But if by any chance you say, oh, well, today I'm going to take a break, I'm going to take a, a day off and see what's happening outside, or you ask someone, what's happening out there? 
So you get distracted. It's not 100%. It's not the fast of Daniel. The fast of Daniel is a purpose for those who are truly thirsty and hungry and they really want to have an encounter with God to change their situation, to change their life completely. They want to start from zero. They want to leave the past behind. If it's not this way, then it's not going to work. This is the reality. Jesus speaks about this in a parable when he said that the kingdom of God is like a man who finds a treasure in a field. He, f he hides the treasure, goes back, sells everything he has, he, get, he gets rid of everything, a hundred percent. He comes back with nothing. He comes back, let's say, naked. And then he gets everything that he has there to buy that field because that field has an immeasurable treasure. That field has an eternal treasure, a priceless treasure. So he places all of his coins in, in that field and buys that field. And then he has the treasure. And this treasure is the Lord Jesus himself through the Holy Spirit. So, if you really want my help, my friend, this is the help I'm giving you. It's trying to open your understanding, trying to clarify that you are not placing 100%. Not, you're not putting all of your strength into what you want. You are placing more or less halfway. And that's what happens. You will be deceived several times. This is the reality, unfortunately. This is the reality. But what can I do? You are the one who decides. The mind is yours. You know what you need to do. The problem is that you don't have the courage to do what you know you need to do. That's the reality. And this is something very personal, okay? So, I wanted to also let you know about our fast of Daniel on the 31st of December. We are going to be on Mount Hermon, stretching out our hands to bless those who have been doing, those who are giving their all in order to receive the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter the distance that will separate us. It doesn't matter wherever you are in the world, whether in a prison cell, in a hospital, a clinic, at home, in church, wherever you are. But if you are in spirit, desiring, thirsty, really wanting this experience, this monumental experience with God through the Holy Spirit, then you are going to be connected with us as if you were together with us there and we placing our hands over your head and blessing you and passing on to you what God has given us. So, on the 31st, from the 31st to the 1st of January, it's a Saturday to Sunday, right? I think it's Saturday to Sunday. Yes, you know. The last day of the year, the last hours, the last moment of the year, we are going to be there in the name of the Lord Jesus, in this faith. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll see you tomorrow. Amen.